What is going on, movie fans, and welcome back to my channel. We have a very interesting film to talk about today, and that is A24's historical drama by the name of The Zone of Interest. Now, this will be kind of a free-flowing, open conversation and talking about in an analytical way, giving you my deep dive without spoiling anything about this movie into this very unique, experimental experience of a film. Now, this movie is brought to us by director Jonathan Glazer, who this isn't the only film I've seen of his. He made a film almost like 10 years ago, I want to say, Star Scarlet. The Johansson's called Under the Skin. That movie itself is a very kind of a one and done movie for me, but very I remember it being unique in its storytelling approach and storytelling. Let's talk about that first and foremost. Again, no spoilers, but this film isn't using the typical storytelling methods to tell this story about this officer in charge of a concentration camp. Tim and his wife strive to build a life for their family and a house and a garden next to the camp. Now, first off, mild spoiler here, but the way we open this film within the first three, four, five minutes, it's just we get this haunting score that is only at the beginning and the end of this film. And within the first four or five minutes of this film, it opens with this black screen. And that tells you everything you need to know about this very weird, strange, unorthodox approach to this film. Because that thing right there, the darkness, it's about the things you don't see, but instead what you hear that creates the horrors and the terror of what's going on next door. Now, for obvious reasons, I don't have to explain what's happening in the camp next door to this family, but the way the film handles the incredibly dark and scary and unhumane actions was kind of unique in my opinion. We see this seamlessly happy family living their everyday lives, playing at the pool, you know, making things in the garden, all while that's happening, again, we don't go over the wall, and we'll talk about the restraint that this film has, but while they're living their happy life, you see in the background, on the forefront, you see smoke in the air, you see ashes, you hear the screams and the, the yells of the men, the women, the children, the babies, and it's just haunting to hear that, and again, it's hearing all of that stuff going on while seeing this everyday family just living their life as if horror isn't right next door to them, which was just so off-kilting, unsettling, while all all that was going on and that's really what the film's about there's no plot you see them eating around talking having conversations about work you don't see any overarching themes the characters don't have to overcome anything they're not going from a to b it's really challenging for you as a viewer to number one find that appealing for an hour and 45 minutes but even more challenging is these are Nazis. These are, this is an evil people in my opinion, you know? So it's like trying to find that appeal, trying to find a way to keep yourself like engaged and invest in the story and compelled because again, there's no plot going on in this movie. Now, I personally didn't really enjoy watching these characters for obvious reasons, but also they're clearly acting, but what they're doing on screen is the farthest from being interesting. This is a muted film. This is a slow paced film, but all that said, the restraint to not show the horrors of what's going on across the wall or not even showing actual violence on screen was very unique in this type of genre. But what I found interesting or on a more positive light about this film is the question that this film poses to its audience, which is, what is evil? What does it look like? Because in my book, Nazis are evil individuals, but this film doesn't really show you that evil, but it shows this family being people living their lives and evil comes in various forms, but can be masked by normal behavior and look very familiar to what we do in our everyday lives. That's the horror of it all. It's like, like I said, horror comes, evil comes in various different shapes and sizes and forms. And I applaud the filmmaking that goes into that decision, but also the position of the camera and making you as an audience feel like you're watching something versus engaging with the material very much and I compared this experience to like going to and it's funny enough I'm comparing it to like an art gallery or a museum without spoiling anything there's a portion of the film where we actually go to a museum and I think that scene kind of puts an emphasis on we don't want you to like grab on to what's going on we just want you to watch what's going on so I thought that was a very kind of Interesting creative way of showing a story taking place or showing these characters doing their everyday life. And more on that artistic or analytical note, the subject of the wall was the most interesting thing to me because it was very symbolic of the walls we all sometimes put up to hide our own secrets or our own horrors we all face in our everyday lives. And we see this film using the wall as a character and how these characters use this to hide their lives and to act like everything's normal. So again, 
again, the walls me and you, everyone in the world kind of builds up to pretend like, okay, what's then? And obviously not to extreme what's going on in this film, but like, I don't want to deal with our bills. I don't want to deal with my college loans. I don't want to deal with a bad relationship. That's how this wall is kind of separated there. Like these people are just ignoring the atrocities going on and just living their everyday life. And again, with this subject matter of the Holocaust, this film is way more interested in the normalcy of the horrific events and this Nazi family and how they're just dealing with everyday life like nothing is going on, which is so haunting to me. But that doesn't make this masterpiece by any means. But on a very simple level, I didn't, I wouldn't say I enjoyed this film, nor that I found it entertaining. But putting that aside, again, I can still appreciate the artistic analogy that I used earlier and, and appreciate the art and appreciate the artistic experimental work going on here because again it's a very hands-off approach very cold disattached experience no character arch no character developments but I still don't want to ignore the fact that we do have some pretty solid approaches to the performances because they're very simple we're living these lives these characters Christian Fredal and Sandra Haller do a pretty good job of just acting as though the camera's not there they seem like they're just doing performer of art they're just there living the lives of these characters they're portraying so and also shout out to Sandra I just saw Anatomy of Fall uh, you can see my thoughts on that on the channel but uh, the performances were solid but I want to also talk about the production elements of this film because on a production level the sights or lack of sight but more or less the sound and the use of the background of this movie and the limited score to me was very effective and also kudos to creating this house creating the time period and the hair and the makeup everything looked well put together so before I give you all my overall score and let you know if this film was worth checking out I want to thank you for making it to this point in the review if you haven't already consider liking sharing your thoughts in the comments consider sharing this video and also consider subscribing to the channel Overall, Zona Interest is an experimental film that is very unorthodox and extremely challenging, and it can be difficult to watch, not just because of the subject matter, but also because of the lack of the plot. The distinction between what you can hear and what you don't see is highly effective. Evil can manifest itself in various forms as depicted in this film. The movie's clever in its effective use of the wall as a shield to protect this family from the horrors on the other side was quite brilliant. It's a niche film that stands on its own in its genre, but honestly, I wouldn't say I would recommend this to anyone. With that being said, I'm going to give The Zone of Interest a 3 out of 5. And again, I understand the central thesis of this film, and I can appreciate the efforts, but not connecting to a story or the characters is something I look for in movies. This was a one-and-done experience for me, and again, I can't say I had fun watching this, nor again will I recommend this film to you all watching this video. But if you are like me and like watching all forms of storytelling and cinema, then give it a watch. <laughs> and when you do, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Pros, cons, what was your experience like watching this movie? What worked, what didn't work? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. So thank you all for watching today's video. I hope you all are staying safe. Hope you all enjoyed yourself. As you can see on the screen now, consider subscribing to the channel, checking out all my most recent reviews, check out my most recent breakdown. You all are great. You're all awesome. Stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next video.